the library. It's a place where I love to be. Look in a book, here's a story for you. Who makes stories when the day is through? Who makes stories when the day is through? Story makers, story makers. Working through the night till the rising sun. Story makers, story makers. Stories are fabulous, stories are fun. Milton Wordsworth. Jackson. Working through the night till the rising sun. Story makers, story makers, stories are fabulous, stories are fun. Come with me. Hello. Has everybody gone? The sun is down, the stars are bright. Story makers come out at night. Welcome one and all, Milton Wordsworth, story maker and magical maestro at your service. Hello, Milton. Ah, uh, Jackson, what do you think? Think about what, Milton? My new look, of course. Uh, oh. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> really? What in particular? Oh, can you help me? Uh, what is different about Milton? Is it his clothes? Uh, no. Oh, what's that? His hair? <gasps> Milton, what have you done to your hair? I haven't done anything. The hairdresser did it. Oh. So, what do you think? <laughs> 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 well, I never... Time for a story. Now, I know that I can depend on you to help me. So, let's use this and your imagination, if you please. Imagine, imagine, imagine a story. It's a playbook. And it's called My Dad the Hairdresser. Today, I'm going to have my hair cut. I know the hairdresser really well. He's my dad. I like going to his salon because there's so much to see. Mrs. Martin gets her hair done every week. Her dog likes to watch too. Sometimes I help around the salon. I help take rollers out home hair. I clean the brushes and clear up the hair that collects on the floor. I make sure that customers don't get hairspray in their eyes. But best of all, I like it when Dad cuts my hair. Before I have the chance to tell him what style I would like, I am washed, shampooed, rubbed, Rinsed, combed, snipped, clipped, shaved, and tickled. I know I will look fantastic because Dad is a great hairdresser. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> oh, Milton, mm -hmm. I think I like your hair. Really? Yes, it is growing on me. Well, I rather hoped it would be growing on me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I wish I could change the colour of my hair. Why? Your hair looks great in pink. Mm, I just fancy a change. Mm. But what colour? Mm. Mm. I, I quite like blue, but then red is nice, and, and green is one of my favourites, and so is yellow, and... and Oh, oh, which one? How about something like this? It's a magnificent multicoloured wig. I'm not wearing that. Oh. I would look like a clown. <laughs> I know. What? Shall we use this to make a story instead? Oh, yes. That's a much better idea. <laughs> ah, here we go again. Are you ready? 
Imagine, imagine, imagine a story. It's a barnacle rock story. Did the wig help? Let's see, shall we? The hairy, scary fish. Once upon a tide at Barnacle Rock, something hairy turned up and it landed right on top of Papa Clam. His world suddenly went very dark, even though his shell was open. Later on, Ellie woke up. chimed the barnacles. Morning, Harry. Morning, Littley, grinned Ellie. Electra arrived too. I've just seen the strangest looking hairy rainbow fish. Why don't we take a look, suggested Ellie. The sea creatures peered over to where the hairy rainbow fish lay. Look at all those lovely colours, said Ellie, floating closer. Hello, she whispered. But just as Ellie reached the hairy rainbow fish, it let out a rather loud burp and started to shake. The sea creatures were rather scared. Suddenly, there was an... Help! cried Poppet Clam, who appeared briefly from under the hairy rainbow creature. Look! cried Ellie. It's Poppet Clam! But Poppet Clam was gone. Whatever shall we do? hissed Electra. Ellie thought for a moment. We'll have to send for Gruff. Gruff, are you there? Called Harry. What sort of kerfuffle? Grumbled Gruff as he swam out from behind his slimy stone. Oh, Gruff, you have to help us, wailed Ellie. Papa Clam has been nabbed by a hairy rainbow fish. Stand back, stand back, Gruff grunted. The sea creatures watched as he swam up to the hairy rainbow fish. <laughs> He puffed it just far enough away to free Papa Clam. Thank you, Gruff, me old mate, said a very happy Papa Clam. Oh, all of a sudden, everything went dark. Something must have landed on my shell, he said. It was a hairy rainbow fish, Ellie told him. See for yourself. She nodded to the place in the distance where the hairy rainbow fish lay. Well, I never, muttered Papa Clam. <laughs> That's no fish. It's a wig. The people up top put them on their heads sometimes to change the way their hair looks. <laughs> All the sea creatures laughed. <laughs> Ooh, that story was dreet. Yes, it must be fun to change your hair. Look, long hair, short hair. Hair. Curly hair, straight hair. Red, yellow, black, even blue. Which hair suits you? Oh, definitely this one. Oh, yes. Let's put it in the story machine. Yes. <laughs> oh, now we need your help. <laughs> Do you remember the magic words? Imagine. Imagine. Imagine, imagine a, a story. It's a blue cow story. Blue cow and a yeti. Mm. I wonder what a yeti is. Mm. Well, maybe the story will tell us. In a field not so far away from you is a herd of cows grazing quietly. They munch and chew on the lush green grass and are just like any other cows you could find. But one of the cows is different from the rest. Blue Cow wonders, wonders what on earth is out there in the big wide world beyond her field. One day, Blue Cow was looking at all the other cows. I wonder what it would be like to have really long hair all over. The other cows sighed and shook their heads. She's off again. I wonder, said Blue Cow. Well, I'll never know unless I go. So Blue Cow caught the bus that stops beside her field. I'd like a return ticket to see a very hairy creature, please. There you go, madam. Hold very tight. And they set off for a very strange place. Ooh. 
and then they arrived. When Blue Cow got off the bus, she could hardly believe her eyes. There were giant footprints as large as her head, leading up to a purple mountain with a huge green door on the front. Blue Cow walked up to the door and knocked gently. The door creaked open. Yes, said a very deep voice. There, in front of us, stood an enormous creature covered from head to toe in long, flowing silver hair. Hello, said Blue Cow. I'm Blue Cow. I'm Mr. Yeti. Do come inside. Blue Cow noticed that everything in his home was bigger than normal and was covered in hair. There was a huge dining table covered in long brown hair. On the table were four hairy bowls of soup. Around the table there were five hairy chairs, and on the chairs sat one hairy red person, one hairy purple person, and one hairy pink person. My family and I were about to eat dinner. Would you join us? Said Mr. Yeti. Oh yes, thank you," said Blue Cow. After eating all the soup, Blue Cow felt all warm and tingly. If you don't mind me asking," said Blue Cow, "how does it feel being covered in all that hair?" It's very good sometimes, especially in the winter, but we do spend absolutely ages at the hairdressers. Oh, <laughs> it was very nice meeting you, but I must be getting back to the field now. It was very nice to meet you," said Mr. Yeti. Thank you," said Blue Cow. You'll never guess where I've been. Where have you been? I have been to a very hairy place. Everyone knows cows can't go there, but we know they can, don't we? <laughs> oh,、um, so, so a yeti is a creature with lots and lots of hair.、Mm. Oh. I think you would make a great yeti, Milton. <laughs> well, actually, I've decided that I'm not really sure about my new hairstyle.、Oh. Not yeti, anyway. <laughs> not yeti. <laughs> so, so you're going to change it back? Well,、uh, oh, good. Oh, good, good, good. But alas, it will have to wait until tomorrow. Oh, but but we love you just as you are, Milton. Yeah, and it is nice to have a change sometimes. <laughs> Very true. The dawn is upon us. The morning is nigh. We've made our stories, and we bid you goodbye. Thanks for helping. Bye, story makers. See you again soon. <laughs>